The Honourable Member for Regina Louvain. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Earlier this month, I asked whether the federal government was offering to share the cost of restoring needed bus service in Saskatchewan. I didn't get a very specific answer that day, but the next day, news broke that the federal government had offered cost sharing to Saskatchewan, but unfortunately, our provincial government had turned down the money. I'd like to use this adjournment debate to examine what the federal government offered and what it should potentially offer going forward. As reported in the media, the federal government offer was an amount of $10 million to all four Western Canadian provinces to replace the service lost when Greyhound withdrew from Western Canada. Saskatchewan would have received about $2 million. A large part of the reason that that amount is so low is that the federal government was only proposing to replace the service lost uh, from Greyhound. Greyhound only provided interprovincial routes from Saskatchewan. Routes inside the province were operated by a provincial crown corporation, the Saskatchewan Transportation Company. So the federal government was not proposing anything uh, to replace uh, the service lost when our SAS party government uh, shut down uh, and sold off uh, that enterprise in 2017. The SAS party said that it would have cost $85 million over five years to continue operating the STC routes, which of course is an order of magnitude greater than what the federal government uh, had offered to replace just the lost uh, Greyhound service. To put these numbers in context, Madam Speaker, Budget 2017 unveiled $20 billion of transit funding. It allocated this money between the provinces mostly according to existing transit ridership. That funding formula uh, skewed very much in favour of large metropolitan centres that already had well-developed transit systems and a large number of people already using those systems. This focus on existing transit ridership disadvantaged smaller provinces such as Saskatchewan. So to provide some numbers, the federal government's formula gave Saskatchewan 1.6% of the transit funding, whereas our province comprises 3.2% of Canada's population. In other words, the federal government is providing transit funding of $320 million to Saskatchewan, whereas our equal per capita share of the money would be more like $640 million. Uh, of course, as you know, Madam Speaker, most federal transfer programs uh, are allocated on a strictly per capita basis to the provinces. So the case that I would make is that by simply providing uh, a fair per capita share of transit funding to Saskatchewan, and making it clear that that money can be used not only for urban transit, but also for interprovincial and rural bus service, there would be more than enough funding to restore needed bus service in Saskatchewan to replace not only the routes abandoned by Greyhound, but also the routes uh, that used to be provided by our provincial crown corporation, the Saskatchewan Transportation Company, and I hope the government will agree to this approach going forward. Thanks very much. The Honourable Prime Minister Secretary to the Minister of Transport. Madam Speaker, I'd like to start by thanking the member for the Cooperative Commonwealth Federation for raising this very important issue. Greyhound's decision to discontinue Western service on October 31st, 2018 impacted many communities across British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, as well as Northern Ontario. Intercity bus service remains an important transportation option for Canadians, particularly seniors, youth, Indigenous peoples, and individuals in rural and remote communities. Without it, Canadians could have a difficult time connecting with friends and family in other communities, as well as accessing important community services, such as health care. While most intercity bus services fall within the jurisdiction of provincial governments, we stepped up because we recognized the magnitude and interprovincial nature of Greyhound's departure from these provinces and have worked diligently to develop solutions to address the issue. On October 31st, 2018, after collaborative work with provincial governments, the federal government announced its plan to address Greyhound service reductions. 
The first part, the plan includes a willingness from the federal government to offer support on a transitional and cost shared basis to the provinces affected so they can fill the gaps in service left behind by Greyhound on October 31st. Recently, the Minister of Transport reached out directly to his counterparts in provinces, including the province of Saskatchewan, where gaps remain to reiterate the federal government's offer of support. The federal government remains ready and willing to support the provinces in addressing their inner city, city bus needs. We know that more needs to be done to ensure Canadians continue to have access to inner city bus transportation options. For several years, inner city bus services have been reduced or eliminated in many parts of Canada. That is why the federal government also announced its commitment to continue collaborating with our partners to develop innovative, longer-term solutions to address the surface tra transportation needs of all Canadians. The Honourable Member for Regina Louvain. Well, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker, and I would like to thank the Parliamentary Secretary for providing a very good uh, account of why uh, intercity bus service is so important. Uh, the Parliamentary Secretary suggested that the federal government would only fund interprovincial service, but of course the federal government has chosen to fund urban transit, which is clearly within provincial jurisdiction, uh, and the federal government could choose to fund uh, other bus service uh, within provincial jurisdiction as well if it wanted to offer the money. Uh, the Parliamentary Secretary seemed open uh, to uh, future federal support or future federal offers, and I wonder if he could clarify whether the Government of Canada will make its public transit infrastructure fund uh, available to provinces on an equal per capita basis and uh, whether it will make those funds available not only for urban transit but also for intercity transit. Thank you. The Honourable Prime Minister Secretary to the Minister of Transport. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, and through you to the member from the Cooperative Commonwealth Federation and, and to all Canadians. Of course, our government is proud of the unprecedented and historic investments that we're making in transportation. But as it refers to the Greyhound, which was the original question, and its withdrawal and our uh, reaction to that withdrawal, as announced by our government on October 31, 2018, the current focus is on helping affected provinces fill the gaps in service left by Greyhound. Because of the wide-scale impacts of these service gaps on many communities in these provinces, it is important to work quickly and diligently to ensure a minimal disruption is possible. We will continue to work hard for communities across the country, and it is our hope that our provincial leaders and partners will do the same.